All right, welcome everyone. We're so glad that you could join us for another Monticello for Kids Live. My name is Laura and I work at Monticello as an educator. We are still at home staying safe and we hope you are too. Um, let me show you a picture of Monticello. It means little mountain in Italian and it is the home of Thomas Jefferson, our third president and author of the Declaration of Independence. Uh, and this week on our live streams, we've been talking talking about something that Jefferson and so many people throughout history and today uh, absolutely loved, and that's music. Uh, I love music, and it's certainly been something I've been enjoying while I've been at home um, as a comfort and something to find entertainment in. And so if you tuned in earlier this week, you got to see our colleague Bill Barker, who portrays or um, acts as Thomas Jefferson, talk about his love of music. He even hummed a few lines. Uh, and yesterday we had an extraordinary performance from the Early Music Project where they played some music uh, that Jefferson would have heard and enjoyed and even wrote down copies of. So I'd highly recommend going back and watching yesterday's performance. I really enjoyed it. And today we're going to talk more about music all around Jefferson's Little Mountain. And we're going to find a fun way to make music from things around the house. And we'll see if we can recreate this fun little instrument together, sort of a little uh, banjo or stringed instrument of really whatever you imagine it to be. Uh, so today we can really listen to music anywhere. I can go on a walk around the neighborhood, take my phone with me, uh, and never really have a moment's silence, although the birds are certainly putting on plenty of music of their own. Um, so think about this with me. We can listen to music anywhere now, but how were people listening to music 200 years ago? Uh, how did they make that happen? So if you have any ideas, um, please share those with us in the comments and we will share your answers as we think about how music was different 200 years ago than it is now. And part of what was really cool about what was happening with music 200 years ago is that different styles from around the world were coming together in the brand new United States. And this is still happening. Music is always changing, genres shift and what they sound like. Uh, and on plantations like Monticello, you had music uh, from African enslaved families mixing with instruments from European settler families uh, with Native American sounds and instruments um, and all new different styles coming together that created uh, the beginnings of truly American music uh, like jazz and the blues uh, that have come through the centuries to what we enjoy now. So that's really cool to think about. Um, and enjoying music in Jefferson's lifetime often meant creating music for one's self. Uh, so, and that also meant that a lot of people were used to performing for friends and family, uh, something that might seem a little scary or strange to us now. Uh, everyone was expected to know the popular dances of the time so they could participate at parties. So maybe you've learned some uh, popular dances and recorded them in the last few weeks. Um, so lots of different forms of music and social expectations for music and um, different instruments were accessible to different people. And we'll talk a little bit about that too. So Jefferson's early love of music starts with um, a variety of stringed instruments. And that's what we're gonna make today is a stringed instrument. Um, and instead of real proper strings, we're gonna use some rubber bands. Um, and to hold them still on these paper bowls, I'm gonna cut some slits in the sides, so sort of matching cuts on each side of the bowl to fit the rubber bands in. And while I do that, we'll take a look at some of the instruments that Jefferson enjoyed. So Jefferson himself played the violin. Almost makes you wanna break into song from the musical 1776, where Jefferson sings, or the cast sings about Jefferson playing the violin. Uh, and he played it for many years. He learned, he uh, improved his skills living in Williamsburg while he went to college at William and Mary. Uh, and it's known as a fiddle as well. And that's really just all about the style of music. Was it country tunes or classical tunes being played? Uh, and when Jefferson met his wife, Martha Wales Skelton, 
she played the harpsichord, which is a sort of an earlier version of the piano that we know now. Uh, and they played music together, so a duet. Of, so two musicians playing together, and that was a very popular way to make music at the time. Um, and keyboards like a harpsichord were usually played um, by women at the time, and then um, men were more likely to play something like a violin, um, which is interesting to think about. Now we can all play whatever we would like to try. And this is actually how they got to know one another, is playing music together. And there's an old story that was sent around at the time um, that Jefferson had gone to visit his future wife and they're playing music together. Uh, and some other gentlemen who wanted to get to know her came to the door, heard them playing music together and gave up and went home. They knew they didn't have a chance after they heard Jefferson and Martha Whale Skelton playing together. So that's a fun story to imagine. Uh, so, as we look at these different instruments, maybe you play an instrument. Tell us what instruments you play or an instrument you'd like to try learning to play. Um, it's always a good time to learn something new. Um, and an instrument you might not be familiar with uh, is called a jaw harp. And here is an image of a jaw harp. I actually have a copy or a replica of one here with me. And I'll hold it up so you can take a closer look. It has a firm metal frame and then a centerpiece that moves. Uh, and it's played by placing it um, in your mouth and it creates a cool twanging sound. Um, and our archeologists are special researchers who dig through the layers of the earth to find what has been left behind in history, uh, have found pieces of jaw harps in their studies. Uh, so here is a piece of a jaw harp being held by one of our archeologists as they sift it out of the dirt. Um, so you might have learned yesterday in our live stream that these were played by enslaved people, white craftsmen, uh, and all sorts of people across the mountaintop. Now I'm going to work on fitting some rubber bands of different thicknesses and how tight they are, a whole variety into these slits. Uh, while we look at what music sounded like for all sorts of people on the mountaintop at Monticello. Um, so the center of really the enslaved community on the mountaintop was called Mulberry Row. Uh, and this image is sort of a recreation of what Mulberry would have row would have looked like uh, when there were lots of buildings there um, and people living there. Oh, we've got some young musicians watching. We have a guitarist and a violinist. Uh, and Ava would also like to play the cello. These are so much fun to play an excellent variety of stringed instruments. If you watched yesterday's performance, you might see the viola da gamba, which is a predecessor of or an earlier version of the cello. So that's cool. Um, to see as well. So Mulberry Row was the center of that enslaved community. This is where you might have heard a jaw harp. Um, we often think about music as part of special celebrations. Uh, and one of the only descriptions we have of Christmas at Monticello is of a fiddle player, a violinist out on Mulberry Row. Um, putting on a show for his family and friends and neighbors. Um, and music has always been an important part of community, especially for um, those whose lives are difficult um, and have are suffering um, under the conditions of slavery for those at Monticello. So music was a way to come together and enjoy one another, uh, create rhythm to their work so they could uh, sing together to uh, work through the day and create a, a rhythm for something like harvesting a crop or uh, sowing seeds. And this is part of where um, instruments were introduced to the United States. So this is an image of an early version of the banjo, which came from Africa. Uh, so you might think of the banjo as an American instrument or just a modern one, but it actually comes all the way from Africa and mixed in with these new styles of music. Uh, so it's another thing that you can imagine being played on Mulberry Row. And um, we also, 
know that there were violins as part of music in the enslaved community. Uh, so here you can see some of those different instruments being played. There's a banjo there on the right. This is an artist's uh, drawing of an enslaved community, uh, not at Monticello, but a similar plantation at the time. Uh, so we also know that there were violins as part of the enslaved community, and this included some of Jefferson's own family. So his three sons who were born to Sally Hemings, um, Beverly, Madison, and Eston Hemings all learned to play the violin. And in fact, when Eston Hemings moved to Ohio as an adult, he actually uh, worked as a musician. Uh, and so we know that he played a lot of the same songs that we know Jefferson liked, uh, which is very cool to think of. Uh, so we've got some local musicians as well at Monticello High School right around the corner. Uh, so a viola player and a violin player. So you could also have some uh, Jeffersonian duets at your house uh, right, right nearby, which is a lot of fun to think about. And so we know that Jefferson's Hemings sons were some of the performers for parties at Monticello too. Probably Beverly Hemings, the oldest we know, played at some of those parties for Jefferson's grandchildren from his daughter's family while they were teenagers. All right, so I have fit all of my rubber bands into the slits that I cut in this paper bowl. And I intentionally picked rubber bands that were all different from each other. These are just different ones that I had around the house from uh, produce from the grocery store or old office papers and things like that. So each one of them is gonna make a different sound. And the way that I'm holding it is also going to affect the sound that it's making. So if you had um, a paint stirrer or something like that to attach, that would work really well. I don't happen to have any around right now, so I'm gonna just use a, my ruler and I'm gonna pull it off of this earlier one that I made and stick it on this one. So as we think about musical performances at Monticello, these would have taken place just like yesterday's did in the parlor, which is a beautiful room. Oops. Um, and it's also um, got high ceilings and a, a partially octagonal space. Um, so these sort of curved walls, uh, which creates a great space for the sound, just like the curve of a gourd to make an early banjo or the curve of some paper bowls uh, to make an instrument. Um, so it reflects the sound beautifully. So this might have included um, enslaved or hired performers like um, Beverly Hemings or like the Scott family, who was a free black family who lived in Charlottesville that we know Jefferson hired. He probably got to meet the Marquis de Lafayette uh, when he was hired to perform. But it would also in have included Jefferson's white family members who would perform uh, for family and friends. Uh, so this meant Jefferson's granddaughters in his retirement years. Uh, so we know that they played some loud tape there. Uh, they played the piano forte, which you can see here in the parlor. This is a later version. So before our modern piano, but after the harpsichord, another version of that stringed instrument. So on a keyboard, you have small hammers hitting all of those strings instead of a, a bow or fingers hitting those strings the way you do uh, with a violin or a viola. Uh, and they would perform there. Uh, and they also had versions of the guitar as well, excuse me. Uh, and so we know that Jefferson's granddaughter, Virginia, had this uh, English style guitar, also called a citern. Uh, and Jefferson gave this to her under the promise that she had to agree to practice. Uh, so he wasn't let it going to let it go to waste. Uh, and there's even a letter that suggests that they had a Spanish style or what we would think of as a typical guitar as well that had sort of been passed down through the family from Jefferson's daughter, Mariah. Uh, so something that might be more familiar to us now. All right, I have finished my paper bowl, banjo, if you will. 
I think I might play with some of these tighter rubber bands that I have to add to the different noises that I can make. It works uh, with strumming and I can play with how tight some of these are to make different noises. If you have extra answers to our questions that you would like to add in, please share those answers with us. And if you have any questions for us, please share those with us in the comments. There's a lot more that you can learn from about Monticello and music. Uh, you can learn more about um, all of the archaeology that was done to find those jaw harps on our website. You can see the recording of yesterday's performance. Uh, and there's also a short video on our YouTube channel of one of our friends, Jimbo Carey, playing the jaw harp at a past Heritage Harvest Festival on the mountaintop. Uh, so you can see a modern recording of a historic instrument at Monticello uh, in so many different forms. Uh, you can study some of those primary sources that tell us about the music that Jefferson enjoyed, like the Virginia Reel, Money Musk, operas, as well as um, Italian tunes, and some things you might recognize from classical music, like Vivaldi and Mozart. Uh, so there's a lot to study and explore. Uh, and if you have questions for us later, please add them in the comments. You can also send what you make or a recording of yourself playing some music uh, to us on social media or at our email at education at uh, And there are so many different ways that we can listen to music, but perhaps you want to try a family performance. Maybe it's just a family karaoke night uh, or something like that that you want to use to enjoy music in this time. Uh, so thank you all for joining us, uh, and we are very excited to, uh, to have you back next week. We are going to be talking about the British invasion of Monticello during the Revolutionary War. Uh, so we'll tell the story of Jack Jewett and make our own tricorn hats as well. So enjoy the day, and thank you all so much for joining us.